This next period of instruction will discuss how to manually nest your part onto a sheet. To do this, we will be using the layout option. With our part saved, we will click Layout This Part. This will open the Part to Layout window. Using this window, we can adjust for our sheet size, margins from left, top, right, and bottom, as well as spacing in the X and Y. Once these settings are adjusted, click the OK button. The sheet will fill with your part. Please note that there is a relationship between the single part and this layout. If your part is renamed or deleted, the layout will no longer open. To illustrate this, we will open the single part and show how adjusting the CAD and removing entities will actually adjust and change all parts on the sheet. We make a change and save our part and note all parts on the layout are also changed. We will undo our change on the part and save the part again. All parts in this nest and any other location that the part might have been nested upon will be updated. Clicking the Layout Properties button allows us to once again adjust our sheet size, our margins, and clamp information if applicable to this sheet. Select the other tab to adjust for the name of the nest, the programmer name, and any comments we might want to see. Using any of the bottom options such as new flat code sequencer are only to be used for punch parts. Since we are using laser only, all of these should be disabled and saved as a default. Clicking the Fit Sheet to Layout button allows us to adjust our sheet to fit tooling boundaries or the geometry. Going back to the layout properties, we can see the size of the sheet has changed. We'll click Undo to change our sheet back to normal. Use the Insert option to add more parts to your sheet. Please use the File Open dialog. Select our part and click OK. If the part is different material or thickness, we may cancel the insert or adapt the part to the new material type. Using the rotate option, we can type in a predetermined angle and every time we click our part, it will rotate through that angle. Using the mirror option, we can have the part flip along its center line, both vertically and horizontally by holding the shift button. Using move allows us to click and drag our part along the sheet or the dock option which will snap the part into corners and next to parts set on a predetermined offset down below. Make Array allows us to adjust an existing array or create a new one from a single part. We can adjust the number of columns and rows as well as the spacing between them. Using these options of Dock, Insert, Rotate, and Make Array, we can now fill our sheet to a full nest.
using the slice array button allows us to remove a section of the grid. Deselect all entities and note the difference in the array. Using the explode array button will actually explode all entities into individual items. Using the break off element allows you to break off a single element from the array. Then using consolidate elements allows you to combine it back into the array. Please note the elements must coincide with the array. And finally, you may use the convert to part option. This will convert the entire array into a single drawing PDG file. With our sheet full and the elements all in their place, we may now save our layout and proceed to the layout sequencing option. In this next lesson, we will learn how to sequence our parts on our sheet and create G-code.